I'm Konstantinos Polarakis from Yale University. I'm a postdoctoral researcher there. This is a joint work with uh, George Yosifidis, who is also a postdoctoral researcher at Yale, and Professor Leandro Stasiulas. So this talk is about uh, carrier-grade Wi-Fi. And the key message that I will try to make is to offload traffic, but not money. So let's see what I mean by this. Uh, the outline of the presentation will be briefly to motivate the, the carrier-grade Wi-Fi. I should speak here. Uh, then the, I will introduce the Wi-Fi deployment and pricing problem. Then I will present some solutions to this uh, joint problem, some evaluation results, and I will conclude. So, as an initial slide, I should stress that uh, over the past few years, we're all witnessing an exponential increase in the mobile data traffic, a, a traffic tsunami. Uh, according to Cisco, uh, until 2020, we're expecting the demand to double every year. And uh, of course, this creates, some prob this creates major problems to carriers. And uh, one issue here is that uh, the traditional network ex expansion methods, such as uh, additional spectrum acquisition or technology upgrades, are very expensive. And uh, therefore, today carriers are in a position where they have to deal with a, a very dramatic increase in their traffic, but at the same time, their profit gains, their, their profits drops. For example, China Mobile in 2014 reported that uh, its traffic increased by more than 100%, but at the same time, he experienced a profit, uh, a, redu a reduction in the profit of 10%. At the same time, there is an increasing interest at Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi traffic will soon exceed the cellular traffic. And uh, of course, we all know that many carriers today uh, shift part of their traffic from the cellular networks to uh, Wi-Fi networks as a way to deal with the network congestion. For example, AT&T or Verizon have, have deployed thousands of hotspots. And there are, this is called Wi-Fi data offloading, and there are several reasons favoring this technique. First of all, Wi-Fi uses a licensed spectrum. And in fact, the FCC recently released another 100 megahertz for Wi-Fi use. <coughs> Second, the last standards of Wi-Fi provide very high speed. And third, Wi-Fi and cellular networks are continuously converging one another. So we can uh, leverage protocols to enable seamless connectivity between the two networks. And let's take a closer look about how carriers use today Wi-Fi. As I stressed at the beginning, many large LTE carriers use Wi-Fi to mitigate network congestion during peak time. But this is not the only uh, use case. Another example is that uh, several small virtu virtual carriers, like Scratch Wireless or Republic Wireless in the United States, use Wi-Fi to attract customers uh, through cheap bundles of cell and Wi-Fi data. For example, Republic Wireless sells a plan, uh, a Wi-Fi only plan with $5. And it can bundle it with, it bundles it with uh, 3G or 4G data and uh, uh, sells it at higher prices. This means that Wi-Fi has value. And a third uh, case is that uh, certain trailblazers like Google uh, have announced hybrid services that hunt the best uh, available signal between cellular and Wi-Fi networks. <coughs> so this is a completely different case than the Wi-Fi data offloading, it, it's uh, used to, uh, in, uh, to improve network performance of the user rather than to offload networks. So despite the momentum of Wi-Fi, uh, the way today that uh, 
the Wi-Fi deployment and pricing are done is using heuristic uh, greedy policies or in general non-optimized policies. For example, the way deployment is done is uh, by simply picking the uh, popular areas, the so-called hotspots, or by picking the coverage holes of the cellular networks and deploy there the Wi-Fi networks. On the other hand, the way the pricing is done is also non-optimized. The prevalent approach is to be that the Wi-Fi will be free of charge. There are also cases where uh, the carriers ask the users to pay for Wi-Fi, like the Republic Wireless that, as I showed earlier, requires five dollars per month by the users to access the hotspots, or maybe Comcast in the United States again that uh, requests uh, about the three or four dollars per hour for access to the hotspots by the non-subscribers. So. This again means that carriers have started, have started to understand that Wi-Fi has value to the users and they try to make money. But uh, this current Wi-Fi deployment and pricing uh, ways and policies that, uh, that are used today are in general poor solutions. For example, consider this, uh, this uh, simple scenario where a cell a carrier has deployed many access points. In this case, three access points, the blue access points, the blue Wi-Fi access points, uh, which makes four out of the five users to offload their data to the Wi-Fi access points, and only the one in the middle, the middle user will go actually to the cellular base station. Of course, this, uh, this solution would offload the maximum traffic. There, there is no chance that there will be congestion in the network because almost all users go to Wi-Fi. But on the other hand, this solution incurs significant cost due to the deployment of the access points. And more importantly, it can cause a, a revenue loss because in the end, only one out of the five users consumes its, its cellular data plan so it's the only one that pays the carrier. So this is the main message of this talk, that we want to optimize Wi-Fi deployment and pricing in a systematic way that offloads traffic but not money, and in general, that optimizes, that maximizes the profits of the carrier. So with these slides, uh, with this slide, I ended the motivation part, which was pretty much to motivate the Wi-Fi deployment and pricing problem, which is a joint problem. And now we'll go to the second part of the talk, uh, which is actually how to formulate this problem. So I will consider a very fundamental and intuitive uh, network model, where I will consider a geographical region with a cellular base station and a set of mobile users scattered in the cell. And we have here a price P sub, a, P sub B for downloading data by the base station, the seller base station, and the respective cost C sub B. So this is without Wi-Fi. The carrier has also the option to deploy some, some Wi-Fi access points at a set of pre predetermined locations. She cannot do it everywhere there are some physical constraints. So we assume a set of locations which, uh, which are the squares. And there is, of course, some deployment cost, some money that he needs to pay. And we denote this with DN. And finally, there will be a price. Wi-Fi may be free. Wi-Fi may not be free. In general, there will be a no-negative price P sub A, dollars per gigabyte, for downloading data by an access point. And of course, similarly to the base station case, there will be some cost, C sub A. And the question will be to, uh, to find the locations that uh, the access point should be deployed, which is a vector X of discrete optimization variables, zero or one. Either an access point will be deployed or not. And at the same time, optimize 
the prices for the Wi-Fi access, which is the P sub A, which is a continuous variable. Uh, but let me stress that uh, we set the same price P sub A for all the Wi-Fi access points instead of having a different price for each one because this is easier for users to understand. And the second note is that we only optimize the price of the Wi-Fi access, the P sub A, without optimizing the price of, of the seller access, the P sub B, because carriers in reality I determined the, the price of the seller access based on a bunch of factors, including competition with other carriers. So it would be unrealistic to say that with such a simple model, we, uh, we will show it to a carrier and we will tell him change completely your pricing structure. So now we'll present the problem formulation mathematically. The main challenge here is to model the, the demand of the users. How will they respond uh, to the deployed access points and the prices? Will they offload their data? How much? So this is very challenging to, uh, to answer. But let's assume for a second that we know how they will respond. That we know that the, access, that the demand of the access point at location N will be Q sub N which is a function of the solution of the deployment policy X and the price PA. And the, of course, the, uh, the rest of the demand will go to the uh, seller base station, assuming that we also know uh, the total anticipated demand, which is K. Then the problem would be to find the deployment X and the Wi-Fi access price PA that maximize the profit, which is the difference between revenue payments and costs and is given by this expression. Of course here I assume that I know the, the demand values QN. But in reality users are unpredictable and it's difficult or even irrational and it's difficult to, to, to be sure, that, to be confident that I know these values. So what we did in this work is to consider two uh, well-known well demand models, namely the constant elasticity demand model and uh, second, the logic demand model. So about the first one, the constant elasticity demand model, the demand of an X point N will be given by this formula where QN equals to the portion of, to the fraction of VN over PA, where VN is a valuation coefficient uh, that is known for the, that, the caps, that captures the preference of the user for the access point N. And there is also a sensitivity parameter R that shapes uh, the demand. For example, uh, for a single access point in the plot, we see that the demand, uh, of course, will decrease as a function of the price. As the Wi-Fi access becomes more expensive, users uh, will not pick the access point, but will go as traditionally to the uh, seller base station. And the price sensitivity R determines the steepness of the, of the curve, of the function. So a, a property of the constant elasticity demand model it is that the demands of the access points do not depend on the other. That is, uh, I can tell you the demand of an access point regardless of the demand of the nearby access points, which is not, which is not the case uh, often. Since if, for example, we have two neighbor access points and one of them is, attracts many, most of the demand, the other will not attract it. So this would be uh, this, this should depend on another quite often. So to capture this, we also consider the logic demand model, where the, which is a stochastic model, and the demand QN of an access point is given by the uh, total demand times the probability that any user will assign to this uh, access point, which is the SN probability. 
And according to the definition of logic demand model, this probability uh, will be given by, by a complex function with some exponential terms inside. And just to take a look at the, how, how the demand function looks, uh, here we, I have plotted the demand for two access points, where now we see that as the demand for access point one increases, the demand of the other access point drops, which means that the demands now are not separable. This is the difference compared to the constant elasticity demand. In general, these are two widely applied demand models. So given that it is very difficult to predict user behavior, we believe that it's pretty much close to the best one we can do to, to model uh, user behavior. So having defined the problem formulation, the objective function, the assumptions that we made, and the demand models, I'm now ready to solve a, a very challenging optimization problem, which is the joint Wi-Fi deployment and pricing. So how should I do it? I have to do it separately for each one of the two demand models, because the objective functions will be different since the demand functions are different. So I will begin with the constant elasticity demand model. And I will, I will uh, try first to uh, solve the pricing sub problem given a deployment policy X. And in this figure, I, I show how the profit uh, looks as a function of the price. And this figure pretty much says that the profit will increase as the price increases, but up to a critical point. And after that, the profit will drop, which is intuitively correct. We cannot charge, we cannot price the Wi-Fi access arbitrarily high. But in, on the other hand, we, we shouldn't charge it too low. So we have to find the right value that optimizes this curve. And we are lucky that uh, for given deployment policy X, the function is over PA is convex. So we can simply differentiate the objective function and find the optimal pricing policy, which is given by this closed form uh, expression. On, okay. So based on that, we can also find the optimal deployment policy which is, it, it tends to be a very simple rule that says that if the uh, valuation coefficient of, the, of an access point Vn is above the threshold, then you should deploy an access point at this location. Otherwise, no. So, in the end, we have managed to solve both the pricing and the access point deployment problem and in a joint manner. And the, so the structure of the solution of uh, the deployment problem says that the optimal number of access points reduces with the access point deployment cost, the net profit for a cellular service, the Wi-Fi link, or the Wi-Fi link cost, and the sensitivity of users in price R. So pretty much we also got some insights about how the, the, the carrier should deploy uh, the access points, whether they should deploy a large number of access points or not, how, how this depends on which parameters. And from a theoretical perspective, we also managed to, to solve a very difficult uh, mixed integer, non-linear optimization problem optimally, and in fact, in a closed form solution, which is something uh, very rare in the literature. So having uh, solve the, uh, the problem for the constant assisted demand model, I now turn my attention to the logic demand model, uh, which I will show that it's, it's more complex because, because the uh, demand function is more complex. So again, I will start uh, my investigation to the problem by the simpler sum problem of finding the optimal price for a given access deployment X. So again, I will show here how the profit function looks as a function of the, of the price PA. And again, we see that 
the profit increases as the price increases up to a point, and then it drops. So again, we should not charge too low, we should not charge too high. We have to, to find the right balance, the right value. And th this we uh, depict uh, two different scenarios, the blue scenario and the red scenario, which differ on the uh, value of the uh, VN parameter. So, but uh, in contrast to the previous uh, case, here the uh, objective function over price is non-convex. So we cannot simply differentiate and find uh, in a straightforward way the uh, optimal pricing solution. We have to work more on this. And what we did is to uh, using a, a one-page proof, we showed that uh, that the problem is equivalent to another problem that is convex. So we can, in the end, we can indeed solve this problem and find a closed-form solution for the pricing. And this is, but this time it's it's very complicated. Actually, it's it's a it's an expression that involves also the Lambert function and it's not so uh, easy to interpret the results. But even so, we can use this closed form solution of the pricing to find the deployment policy X. And we are lucky that uh, we can show that uh, the joint deployment and pricing problems under the LD model falls into the class of submodular function optimization problems, which is a well-known class of problems that can be solved with a certain efficient approximation algorithms, such as random algorithms, local search algorithms, simulated annealing algorithms, etc. There are um, more than 10 algorithms that can solve efficiently all these problems. So we, uh, so we chose the best one, the randomized grid algorithm, which provides a two approximation ratio uh, to the joint pricing and deployment problem under the LT model. And just to say in a few lines how, how this algorithm works, it, uh, it's an iterative algorithm, and at each iteration it maintains two sets. An empty set, and, and a set A which is initially empty, and a set B which is initially equal to the set of all access points. And it also uh, creates an arbitrary ordering of the access points. And then iteratively, it either adds an access point to the first set A, or it removes it from the second set B. And it, it does this randomly, based on the marginal uh, values of the uh, various elements. So in the end, it will, uh, the two uh, sets A and B will be the same, and this will be the output of the algorithm. This will be the set of access points that should be deployed. So uh, with this slide, I completed the third part of the talk, which was how actually to, to solve these uh, deployment and pricing problems. And we, we, saw how, we saw how to solve them for the set model and for the LD model. We found an optimal algorithm for the set model and an approximation algorithm on the LD model. Now we will evaluate the solutions. So uh, I will consider a very simple scenario, actually a geographical area like the one depicted on the right side of the uh, slide with a radius of uh, 500 meters and 15 possible access point locations. And these uh, locations are not uh, determined randomly, but actually they correspond to, to the real physical locations of the access points in the wireless topology discovery project. And uh, then I will also make some assumptions about what is the demand, what is the, the number of users in this area. And I will uh, pick the number of users to be 1,158, which corresponds to a population density of 12,000 users per square mile, which is a typical value in uh, density scenarios. 
And then I will split these users to the various access point locations based on the time series of the Wi-Fi access pattern in this uh, data set. Okay, so the important thing here is that I will evaluate two different cases. A case of a large LTE carrier and a case of a small virtual carrier. So we all uh, understand that uh, these two carriers are quite different one the other. They have different priorities. They, have, they, they will possibly end up with a different, different solutions. So we're interested to, to see the results, how the results differ in these two cases. So just to uh, briefly say how uh, I differentiated the two cases. So following recent reports, we argued that uh, the, LT, the uh, users of the LT carrier should have higher demand than the users of the virtual carrier. But on the other hand, the users of the virtual carrier will be more willing to pay for Wi-Fi rather than the users of the LT carrier. And this is reasonable, given that uh, the users of the virtual carrier already uh, pay the virtual carrier. So in a sense, they, they are willing to do it again in our optimization. On the other hand, the users of the LT carrier may face Wi-Fi with skepticism because they are already provided with high a cellular access speed. So making some assumptions here and following recent reports, we were able to extract the parameters values that are needed to describe the demand models for the continental assisted demand and the logic demand models. And these are actually the values of the coefficients visa ben. This is what we didn't know and we had to, to find and see how it will differ uh, among the LTE carrier and the virtual carrier. And I should stress here that uh, the evaluation code, the complete evaluation code in this paper is available online. So uh, you can also uh, verify uh, which parameters, uh, parameter values we have used. And uh, maybe you can come up with uh, some different algorithms and convert to our algorithm. You are welcome to do it in any case. But uh, let's show a couple of plots before I conclude due to the time uh, limitations. So we have implemented the randomized greedy algorithm, which is uh, the approximation algorithm for the LD model. And we compared it with the ad hoc algorithm, which uh, pretty much it uh, randomly deploys access points in the cell. But to keep a fair comparison with our algorithm, we also allow him to optimize prices by the given formulas that we have derived. And we had also a third algorithm, which we named baseline, that simply uh, does not deploy access point at all. It only, all, all the demand goes to the seller base station. So this is the baseline scenario. So in these two plots, we evaluated the performance of our solution for the large LTE carrier and independently for the small virtual carrier. And we found, of course, that uh, and, uh, these experiments uh, have on the horizontal axis the deployment cost, how much it costs to deploy an, uh, an access point. And of course, as the deployment cost increase, the profit will decrease because it costs more to deploy access points. So, and the second point is that uh, the proposed randomized grid algorithm, which is a blue one, in both cases performs better than the ad hoc and the baseline. And the benefits are significant, especially for the small virtual carrier case, uh, in which case the virtual carrier can even double its profit by using our algorithm instead of the ad hoc or the baseline. And the third point here is that on the first plot, we see that the ad hoc solution, which is the red line, may even result to a performance, a profit that is even worse than the baseline. Like it could be 25% worse than the baseline, 
which means that Wi-Fi is a tool, it's not a solution. So if we don't use it properly, we may end up performing worse than the baseline, than, than we used to be without Wi-Fi. And to conclude, so we proposed and studied current great Wi-Fi solutions. We see that our work combined strong theoretical results along with uh, numerical evaluations. And for the theoretical part of the paper, we propose a methodology for optimizing access point deployment and pricing policies. We, we were able to derive closed form solutions or approximate solutions for the two different demand models and give some insights to the carriers how to deploy the, and charge the Wi-Fi. And about the numerical results, we found that ad hoc Wi-Fi deployment can actually lead to a net loss for the carrier. So Wi-Fi can harm the performance, the profit of the carrier, if not used properly. And second, that using our methodology, carriers, and especially virtual, small virtual carriers, can even double their profits, so they have to win from us. So just to say in the end that as a topic of future work, we plan to consider additional demand models and data sets among the uh, content analysis demand and the logic demand models. There will be more demand models that may be a better fit. And, to, and finally, to start the competition between many carriers. Because in this work, uh, we focused on a single carrier. So that's all. Thank you.